You can download this preset along with over 175 other useful presets in my pack called Sounds You Know. A link for that's in the description. To get started, initialize preset. We're going to begin by recreating one of the most iconic sounds of the Yamaha DX7 synthesizer. This is one of the first synthesizers to use frequency modulation, and you can hear this all over the place in pop music from the late 80s and early 90s. And the preset we're about to make, you can even hear in TV commercials today. So to make that sound, I'm going to set oscillator 1 to a sine wave from basic shapes. Then I'm going to lower phase randomization to 0. Now I'm going to adjust the envelope, so I'm going to lower sustain all the way down, and then increase the decay to about 10 seconds. Then I'm going to change the release time to 0.5 seconds. And then I'm going to click on this middle point here and drag down to get a steeper curve. Now I'm going to turn on oscillator 2, and we're going to use oscillator 2 as a modulator for the frequency of oscillator 1. So I'm going to lower phase randomization for this one, and this is also going to be a sine wave. Now since this is a modulator, we don't need to hear it, so we're going to turn down the level all the way to zero. Because this is functioning similarly to how an LFO functions. We don't hear the LFOs, even if their uh, frequency is in the audible range. Uh, we'd only use them to modulate other parameters. So that's what we're doing with oscillator 2 here. Now to get oscillator 2 to modulate the frequency of oscillator 1, we click over here, and then I'm going to click FM from oscillator 2. Now I'm going to lower this down from, for now, and then we're going to adjust the frequency of oscillator 2. So you're going to get a lot of different overtones based on the frequency of your modulator here. Now most of the time you're going to be modulating from a frequency within the harmonic series of your carrier. Our carrier in this case is oscillator 1. Uh, but in the case of this bell sound, we want some clamorous tones. We don't want it to be as clean. So we're going to frequency modulate from a frequency that's inharmonic. So in order to do that, I'm going to raise this to 22, uh, which is, so if oscillator 1 is a C, oscillator 2 is a B flat. And if you want to hear that, I can raise the level here. All right, it's not that dissonant you might be thinking, well, that B-flat is in the harmonic series. And you're right, but not until an octave higher. So anyways, now when we do some frequency modulation, let's do about 16% from oscillator 2, uh, we're going to get some clamorous overtones. And for the sake of demonstration, and to make this sound a little bit more like the original, I'm going to add two voices of detune at about 2%. And tell me if you recognize this sound. Pretty close, right? So anyways, I'm going to lower voices back down to 1, and then we're going to do a lot more to this sound to make it more modern. So I'm going to lower frequency modulation 2, I want to control that with macro 1. So I'm going to drag that over, and then for macro 1, let's set this to 0 0.12. So that's a little bit darker, but we're going to be adding a lot of brightness through some other methods. So that one of those methods is going to be adding in even more frequency modulation. So turn on oscillator 3, lower that down to a sine wave, lower phase randomization to 0 again. This is going to be the same frequency as oscillator 2. So now that you've done that, turn on FM from oscillator 3. I'm going to turn that down, and then I'm going to control this frequency modulation with envelope 2. So for envelope 2, this is going to be a little bit shorter than envelope 1, with a decay time of 3 seconds. Let's set sustain all the way down, and then pull down on this curve, and then drag this over to frequency modulation from oscillator 3. Then right click on that modulation amount, and let's set this to about 0.15. And now let's hear what a difference this makes. So it's giving us a little bit more brightness at the front of the note. It's a pretty subtle difference, but I think it makes it better. Now, we're not just going to be using frequency modulation to get these overtones. We're also going to be using a sample. So you can turn on the sample, and I'm going to be using the grinder from Factory here that comes with the free version of Vital. 
I'm gonna lower the level all the way down because I'm gonna control that with envelope three. So turn down the sustain on envelope three. Let's set the decay to 0.3. Then I'm gonna pull on this point right here to make it much more steep. I'm gonna set the release of this to 0.3 as well. Now I'm gonna drag this over to the level of the grinder sample, and let's hear that. Now, you might be thinking that doesn't sound very good. I agree, which is why I'm gonna turn on filter two and set this to phaser negative. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna boost some frequencies from that grinder sample, and those frequencies are gonna be somewhat arbitrary. Most of the time I'm doing this technique, we're routing in the sample by the way, most of the time I'm doing this technique, I'm using uh, the comb filter because the comb filter, uh, in the comb filter, these resonances correspond to frequencies in the harmonic series. And to be honest with you, I don't really know what the pattern is with these frequencies here. But I don't really care because those high overtones in a bell sound, very often they're, they're not really correlated with uh, whatever this frequency here is, that's your fundamental, the one that you hear uh, at the bottom of the sound that sustains for the longest. Um, so let's hear what it sounds like with just the, the grinder sample. It sounds very organic, it sounds very bell-like. Uh, and now with the rest of it. So now we're getting that classic DX7 tubular bell sound along with this. And let's help glue this together with another filter. Um, and before we do that, I need to set the parameters here. So in my original preset, and this is somewhat arbitrary, but you can set this to 52.68. And it's especially arbitrary because I'm gonna be using 60% key tracking. So this isn't gonna always correspond to the same uh, interval uh, for whatever note I'm playing. The reason I'm using 60% key tracking is because I want it to pretty much stay in the upper register, uh, upper register here, so I don't want 100% key tracking, uh, but I do want it to be moving around from note to note to make it sound like you're playing different bells. So anyways, um, I'm gonna turn on oscillator, excuse me, filter one, lower the resonance all the way, and we're gonna be routing in oscillator one and the outcome of filter two here. I'm gonna drag the cutoff all the way to the left so I can control cutoff with macro one, and I'm gonna set that to 0.55. Then we're gonna get a little bit of a pluck with this filter, and in order to do that, I'm gonna use envelope two again. So as you may recall, uh, envelope two is controlling the FM from oscillator three. Now it's also controlling our filter, but I'm gonna reduce that modulation amount. Let's set this to 38. Now let's hear this. Now it's sounding pretty good, uh, but I want the um, I want those low sounds, you know, that Taco Bell sound, I want that to be higher. So I'm gonna raise these an octave. So you can hold shift to raise it an octave, but it's gonna, it's gonna latch to 0, 12, 24, 36. So I can go to 36, lower it to, so I'm at 34. Or you could just hit Alt, hold Alt, click, and 34. So now let's hear that. Now that sounds a little bit more like a cohesive sound because there's not that big gap between the lower frequencies and the high frequencies. And I also think this sounds better in the upper register, so I'm gonna go one step further. I'm gonna increase the transposition up 12 so that we're playing an octave higher. So let's make use of these other macros. So for macro three, uh, I'm gonna use this for decay. So I'm gonna hold shift to make it bipolar and drag it over to the decay of both envelopes one and two. And then I'm gonna lower these amounts to 0.5. Now this will be the shortest the note gets. So if you want just a really quick pluck or if you want something really long. But I like the middle ground where I was at. I'm gonna return it to where I was at 0.5. Now for macro four, uh, we'll make use of that later. Let's go to the effects. So I'm gonna start by turning on an equalizer. 
So uh, basically, I'm just going to cut out some of the very lows and the very highs because, especially with this bell sound, uh, some of those high frequencies can be pretty harsh. So I'm going to turn on this low pass. So for the low pass, I'm going to set the resonance to 5. And then I'm going to set the cutoff of it to 120. And that helps tame the sound quite a bit. And just to be um, cautious, sometimes when you have frequency modulation, you get these, um, these artifacts down here. So it's a good idea to turn on a high pass filter as well. I'm gonna set the resonance down to zero, and then I'm gonna set the cutoff to 30. Now after the equalizer, I'm gonna start adding in some, some flavor to the sound. We have a bell sound, but I'm gonna embellish it with some of these effects starting with a chorus. So I'm going to have the equalizer first, then the chorus. I'm going to lower this to four voices, so it's a little less extreme. I'm going to lower the tempo to eight slash one, so it's a little bit more slow. Uh, I'm going to lower the mix to about 30, so it's more subtle. And then I'm going to lower the spread and the cutoff so that I'm not affecting the entire frequency range. So for the spread, I'd say this is about a third of the way. And then for the cutoff, this is about at six o'clock. So now let's hear this. Now this is gonna add some stereo imaging and some movement to the sound. And a little goes a long way. So after the chorus, let's add in a delay. Now for this delay, I'm gonna set this to mid ping pong. Um, ping pong is going to be completely in the left and right channels and this splits the difference to make it um, a little less extreme. So I'm also going to set the tempo of the right channel to dotted eighth notes just to get something different. Um, and then the feedback is going to be pretty high. So the feedback is just basically how many echoes you're getting from the delay. So I'm setting the feedback to 70. I'm going to set the mix down to 20. And then for the cutoff and spread, I'm going to set the cutoff to 90. And then the spread, I'm going to reduce to 0.2. So that I'm cutting off some of these very highs so that it still kind of sounds like a distant echo. Uh, but I want kind of the jingling sound that I get uh, from some of these um, like mid highs over here. So now that I have that, let's hear it. And this will all get tied together quite a bit with the reverb. Now the reverb, uh, I like to just cut out anything below 30 there, even though there's probably nothing there. Uh, for the chorus amount, I'm going to set this to 15. The chorus in the reverb isn't going to make it sound very realistic, but I think it sounds very cool. So the chorus, um, it kind of makes the reverb sound a little bit more dreamy. Um, and then for the chorus frequency, I'm going to lower that a bit as well to about 6 o'clock or 0.175. Then for the size, I'm going to set this to 30. For time, 2 seconds. And then for the mix, this will be 30. Now let's hear this. So before I finish, I'm going to make use of the rest of the macros. So I got macro 4 here. Let's use that to control the level of our sample here. And you may recall that level is being controlled by envelope 3. So I'm going to drag over macro 4 to that modulation amount. And I'm going to label this sample. Now with no sample, it sounds like this. With 100%, we get a lot more of that brightness that's coming from these resonances in the phaser filter. So let's label the rest of these. Macro 3 is decay. Macro 2 is low pass filter. And then macro 1 is FM. At the beginning of the video, I played this sound, um, but I also played without any of the frequency modulation, and it's a much cleaner sound. But if you want something a little bit more close to that actual tubular bell sound from the DX7, it's a little bit more gong-like, 
more rich in those lower overtones, uh, you could turn down the sample uh, and you could turn up the FM a bit. So let's hear this. So anyways, uh, you can take this sound a lot of different directions with different FM amounts, different amounts of the sample. Uh, you can play with the blend of this phaser filter for different frequencies. You can play with the position of the cutoff here, different amounts of key tracking, different samples um, that you're going to be boosting the frequencies of. Um, and you can have a field day with the effects. I, I certainly did. Um, you can reduce them or add any effects that you see fit. Um, so anyways, I hope this gets you close to the bell sound that you're trying to make. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.